Hello students, this week we are going to be learning about equivalent fractions, which should be a review from third grade, and we're also going to be learning how to compare fractions. So, it turn to page 367 in your math book, and we will get started on equivalent fractions. Alright, on page 367, on number one, it says, look at the area models below. Write the fraction of each model that is shaded. So when you're writing fractions, um, you're always going to have um, a bar there, and then the numerator is going to go on top, and the numerator is the number of t um, fractions that are shaded. So we've got one, two, three, four, five that are shaded, and then the number that goes on bottom is the total. So six, seven, 8, 9, and 10. So the fraction for this is 5 tenths. Same thing over here. There's one shaded, but there's two total. And if you look, they both have half of the circle shaded, but the um, fraction is different because these are equivalent fractions. They are equal to each other. So the question here is, how are the models of the fractions the same? Well, they both have half of the circle shaded. How are they different? One circle is divided into ten parts. The other circle is divided into two parts. Okay, now we're going to take a look at number two. Equivalent fractions name the same part of a whole. Shade the models to show fractions equivalent to one half, then name the fractions. So we can see here that this one is one half, and it has one of two shaded. Well, see how this line is right here? If you go ahead and bring this line down, that's how you can tell how many you should shade. Eventually you'll be able to just eyeball it, but then that shows me that I need to shade these two here and these four on this one. So now these three fractions are all equivalent fractions. So on this one, I shaded two, and there's four total. So one half and two fourths are equivalent fractions. On this one, I shaded four, but there's eight total. So one half, two fourths, and four eighths are all equivalent fractions because they shade the same amount of the whole. This is one whole. Okay, let's turn to page 368. All right, on 368 it says, shade each model to represent the fraction shown. Is the size of the area you shaded, oh, shade. So this is one third, so I'm gonna shade one of three. Is the size of the area you shaded in each model the same? Oh, I didn't realize there was more. So here, we're going to shade two. And down here, we're going to shade four. If I put a line right there, or I could even use a piece of paper or an index card. If I put that right there, is the same amount shaded? Yes. How do you know that one-third, two-sixths, and four-twelfths are equivalent fractions? Because they have the same amount shaded. Compare the models. How many times as many equal parts and shaded parts does each model have than the model above it? So this one, it has one shaded, but this one has two. So that would be times two. 
This one has two shaded and this one has four. So again, that would be times two. So each model has two times more shaded. So now this is where um, it might be a tad bit new for you from last year. You can also multiply the numerator and the denominator of a fraction by the same number to get an equivalent fraction. Write the missing numbers to complete the equation. So if I have one third here, whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So if I multiply the top and the bottom times two, then I can get two six, because one times two is two, three times two is six. And so if you see here, one third times two is two six. How many times as many is the numerator and denominator in two six as in one third? Well, it's two times because we multiplied by two. Write the missing numbers to show a different equivalent fraction for one third. Look, so this one has four on top, and whenever you're working with equivalent fractions, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So this also has to be four. So one times four is four. Three times four is 12. So one third and four twelfths are equivalent fractions. Now our last question here says, explain how you can divide a rectangle into equal parts to show equivalent fractions. So um, we could break the rectangle apart. Whoops. Into equal numbers. then shade to show a fraction. Okay, let's move on to page 369. Okay, so our word that we are learning um, is equivalent fractions. So our first question is, what is it? Well, it is two or more different fractions that name the same part of a whole. Our next question is, what do I know about it? What do I know about it? I can multiply the numerator and denominator of a fraction. by the same number to make an equivalent fraction. Now some examples. So I'm going to draw two circles. I'm going to make this one, I'm going to shade half over here, and I'm going to shade half over here. But over here, this is one half, and this is two fourths. Another example is you can use bars. So I'm making the same two bars. I'm going to divide this one into thirds and shade one third. I'm going to divide this one into thirds, but then I'm going to cut 
cut it down the middle and I'm going to shade two. So one of them is one third and the other one is two sixth, but they have the same amount shaded. And then my last example, I'm going to say one half and I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom times three which is going to give me three six. So that means one half is an equivalent fraction to three six. Okay, now down here at the bottom, shade the models to show fractions equivalent to one half, then name each fraction. Again, you could take a piece of paper and note card and line it up with where the shading ends, and then you see how much you have left to shade. Okay, so we know that this one's one half. This next one we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And on this last one we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one half is equal to three six and one half is equal to five tenths. They are just cut up into different amount of pieces. Okay, go ahead and turn to page 370. Shade each model to represent the fraction shown. So one half, two fourths, and four eighths. Is the size of the area you shaded in each model the same? Yes. How do you know one half, two fourth, and four eighths are equivalent fractions? They have the same amount shaded. Compare the models. How many times as many equal parts and shaded parts does each model have than the model above? Well, if this one has one and this one has two, so that would be times two. This one has two and this one has four, so again, that's two. So two times as many. You can also multiply the numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same number to get an equivalent fraction. Write the missing number. Well, one times what equals two? Well, I know that's two. And whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So two times two is also four. How many times as many is the numerator and denominator in two-fourths as in one-half? Two times as many. Write the missing numbers to show a different equivalent fraction for one half. So we have one half here, and if we multiply it by four, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. One times four is four, two times four is eight. Something I wanna point out about equivalent fractions is if you have one half, you can multiply it by two, you can multiply it by three, you can multiply it by five, you can multiply it by 100. Any number that you multiply it by, it's going to give you an equivalent fraction of one half. So all of these are equivalent fractions of one half. It doesn't matter what number you multiply it by, the answer is always going to be an equivalent fraction of one half. And that's it for this lesson. I will see you back for lesson two.